Hello everyone, what's up? Well today, if you see on my board, we've got a new Mythbuster video that we're going to do. And this time, as I promised, uh, Yanni the Tarantula uh, Man, I think, uh, we are going to cover uh, basic trapdoor uh, care and whatnot. So keep in mind, I'll say this now, I'm not in I'm not very experienced on trapdoors. Trapdoors are true spiders and I'm not as familiar uh, with the genera and species as I am with teas. But other than that, I guess we're going to go take a shot at it and hopefully it'll turn out very great. Okay, so I just had the final exam uh, this morning and I think it went well. That's good. And people are wondering when I'm going to be taking out my car very soon. Well, I have here all the papers. It's all fully registered and insured. Sweet, can't wait to take it out. All right, so let's go get the trapdoor spider. And that's enclosure. Very boring, isn't it? So with this video, you're gonna know all about the trapdoor spider, how to take care of it, and uh, how to properly rehouse it should anything go bad. Okay, so I guess the first thing we're going to do is the eye-opening question of the day. Are trapdoor spiders real tarantulas or not? Well, technically not. These are called megalomorphs. Sure, they do look like teas and they act like teas just because of their uh, chlorocere. Uh, when they work their jaws, they are in the same mechanism up and down, so it kind of looks like a tarantula. But it's not a tarantula because, uh, for one, it doesn't have a lot of hairs around these, uh, the body, and also just because they're in a different uh, class and suborder. So if you know your uh, taxonomy, uh, tarantulas belong in the superfamily called Theraphosphidae, where, as in the trapdoors, are in a suborder class called Megalomorphi. So these are megalomorphs. They look like tarantulas, but they're not. So hopefully that dispels the myth about that species. Okay, so the common and a lot of names for uh, trapdoors. Trapdoors are really, um, I would say, diverse. Uh, they can be seen in North America to Asia and even Africa, as well as Australia. So these are the ones that I just happen to Google and see if they were correct. So these are the ones that I come up with. Yeah, so those are a lot. Trapdoors are very diverse. So I guess we'll start off with the common names and the Latin names and I'll see if I can try to pronounce them. Even I have a little problems with them. Okay, so here we have Encyclotripa species, which defines the Asian red leg or the Asian species of trapdoor. Then you have Gorgirella, which is a Tanzanian trapdoor. Then you have here Stenolopha species, mistakenly always being sold as Statsmyopus robertsi, which is the red trapdoor. This is the most common one in the hobby. Uh, then you have Symphonisia species, which is the silver trapdoor, which I believe I have. Then the Idiop species, which is the brown and black trapdoor from Africa. Then you have Lipisteus species, these are the Malaysian variety, and then you have Bothriocytrum californicum, which is the ones from California. So yeah, it's a pretty diverse species, yeah. Okay, so now availability, uh, you'll probably most likely find them in pet stores, at least the red trapdoor kind. Usually they're on sale for twenty to fifty dollars. Dealers really don't uh, carry trapdoor spiders just because they're not in great of a demand. I just checked like the main dealers on uh, the U.S. like Ken the Bug Guy, uh, Swift Inverts, Paul Becker, Rob C. They don't really have them, but I do see them uh, pop up sometimes on arachnid boards. Actually, there's one of them selling. Uh, I think was it this species for 18 or 32 dollars so it's a very inexpensive spider to own okay so the sizes granted they're not very big at all so uh, two to three inches is pretty typical of the trapdoor size uh, the growth rate I really can't tell you information about the growth rate because I never actually raised one as a sling in captivity 
but as assumed because the lifespan is around 5 to 15 years um, with 5 being male 15 being female uh, they will probably have a growth rate very similar to uh, the haplopelma species you know reaching uh, sexual maturity in around uh, two to three years I believe okay so the males and females um, well of course the males are going to have bulbous pedipalps and tibial hooks whereas the females don't so I'll give you an example of what a trapdoor looks like so this is mine this is a uh, Tara the Terrible uh, this was the first uh, day that I got her and I only saw her maybe once since I got her in what was it July or June of 2010 I do have a video of it okay so let's go to Tarantula Canada's website and we'll show you what they look like okay so these are megalomorphs okay so this is the Gryagella species from Tanzania that's one of them looks kind of like the B. Amelia, if you ask me. Then you have one here. This is another one, Gragella, which is the black trapper variety, also from Tanzania. And I don't think these are trapdoors. No, these are not trapdoors. Uh, here we have Statsmulus robertsi. This is commonly called the red trapper spider, which is the most common one in pet stores. <laughs> if you want my opinion, it's a very ugly looking species. You know, with the eyes right here, that's kind of freaky. So if you want to compare, uh, that's the mature female, and that's a mature male. You can note that it has bulbous pedipalps, and I believe here is actually where the hooks are on the species. So then again, you know, it smaller bodied, smaller abdomen compared to uh, the mature female which is a little bit bigger bodied and <laughs> same abdomen size. Cool. Alright, so now that I established the mature females and the growth rate, now it's time to go for their enclosure setups. Well, this is going to be the easiest <laughs> enclosure setup to do. So this is my trapdoor and this is perfectly what you should do with it and it's happy. So, I recommend getting those 32 ounce deli containers, the tall ones. The substrate I recommend here is uh, potting soil, mixed in with vermiculite. I like potting soil better than EcoWorth because with potting soil you can compact it a lot. So compacting is very important because to establish a good burrow. If, if, if it's too loose, you know, like if you're using sand or vermiculite alone, it's not a good substrate to use because it's too loose and it's not going to be very happy. You might become very stressed. So it's better to pack it down with, uh, with a lot of water and it should be fine. So this is my trapper spider. You're not going to see it. I'm not going to take it out. Uh, so you can see it's very happy in there. It's trapdoor is likely to be right over here. So very easy. So yeah, so just basically a 32 ounce deli container. Make sure you have a lot of substrate in here. I recommend the uh, three quarters to around 80% of the uh, deli container uh, because trapdoors are very obligate burrowers. They will burrow. So please don't give them like borderline substrate because that's not good because they can get very stressed and they can potentially die from it. So that's the best way to house a trapdoor spider. And a trapdoor spider that's never seen is one that is extremely happy. Temperatures, uh, you want to keep them fairly warm, like around 78 to around 82 is the perfect conditions for one. You know, uh, you can keep it like Georosea, even 75 is actually uh, good also. Uh, as far as humidity is concerned, there can be cared for very similar to Hapopalma. They like it fairly humid in there. So keep it around uh, 80%. So that's accomplished by pouring water over the substrate and misting it, uh, I would say twice a week should be fine. All right, now for their temperament and the venom strength, topic number seven. And I guess I should add in handability as well. Okay, so. 
I really shouldn't have to tell you that trapdoor spiders are definitely not Hannibal at all. Uh, just because of their severe aggression, these are really nasty spiders. Uh, they are probably just as aggressive as the S. calciated, the featherweight baboon, as well as their very potent in venom. Their venom strength is really not that dangerous compared to, uh, you know, the, uh, uh, like the Sydney funnel web or the uh, Brazilian wandering spider. But they are medically significant, so you might need to go to the clinic if uh, you do get bitten. So I would deduce that the venom strength is very similar to the OVT and its old world uh, cousins. Uh, keep in mind, individual species will vary, uh, and the strength of venom strength will also vary too. But a lot of people might experience a lot of pain near the bite area local swelling, nausea, muscle and leg cramps, and the like. So it's best not to risk getting bitten over uh, that thing. So if you're going to rehouse it, as you've seen from many of my rehousing videos, I would try to flood it out by putting some water in the tank. So that way it'll flood the burrow and it'll come out. It's the least stressful way to transfer the uh, trapper. And then just take a little big cup and just scoop it in there, just and it'll like come out. All right, perfect. So uh, as far as breeding is concerned, um, there's not really much info on breeding because no one ever has attempted to breed them successfully, just because of their very short lifespan in captivity. So I don't really have some information about it. But if you are watching this video and you are experiencing uh, trapdoor breeding, message me and tell me how it went and how many uh, eggs did you get out of the sack. Okay, now for the last part, the recommendations. Split up in two parts, pros and cons. So, recommendations, um, these are absolutely not recommended for the beginners at all. Uh, these are mainly regarded for the experienced keepers because of their aggression and their potency of venom. Okay, so the pros of owning a trapdoor is as follows. They are interesting and unique. Sure, they're very unique, just because the way they attack. So if you notice that once a trapdoor makes its burrow, it will wait until the crickets move around in circles and triggers off enough vibrations for it to come. Open the door, grab the cricket, close the door, and that's it. Boom. That's how they attack, and it's really a superb sight to see. If you see Tarantula Feeding Video 50, that was the actual best uh, video that I recorded my trapdoor on. Sadly, I don't really see it uh, eat very often anymore. Um, maybe, most likely, it's going to be molting very soon. Who knows? But I'm not going to disturb it, and I know it's alive. Okay, so, again, the second pro is they're relatively simple to care for. As you know, it doesn't really take much effort to design an enclosure. Like I said, 32 ounce deli container with air holes and a lot of compact substrate to burrow, and you're golden. And they don't really need a critter keeper or a five gallon tank just because they are a very small species to own. But the pro con pros comes cons. Some of them are just not pleasant to look at. So they're some of them are really ugly and look like as far as the red trapdoor is concerned, but. Some of them are really beautiful, like the uh, Tanzanian trapdoor that we've seen that looked like the uh, B. Emilia version of the trapdoor, which is really awesome to look at. And then the second one, they're very, very boring. <laughs> like, once, like, a, like I said, a happy trapdoor spider is one that burrows and doesn't come out. So I don't even see it in my nighttime videos. So. Uh, it's just looking at a patch of dirt, and to some people, they get bored of it very quickly. Also, a third one, very important that I forgot to mention, is that once you buy them, they're very difficult, difficult to ID. So even though that my trapdoor spider is labeled as an idiop species, it could be very well be this one here, the symphosia species, with actually seems much more plausible so so in 
pet stores are always wild caught and most likely female but some of them do not know how to label their species right and you can really mix up your information so some of them label them as S. robertsi when it's really Stenolopha species. So basically that's all I have for this uh, video on the trapper spiders. So I do hope it's a helpful video, uh, even though it's not my area of expertise. So the next video we're going to do is Tarantula Mythbuster 28. And I believe I'm going to be doing it on the pink zebra beauty and the other species which one yeah the white collared yep yeah, so hope you enjoy guys and see you later